If your app needs to persist some structured data locally, you might want to use some sort of relational database. Now this structured data might come in the form of either some user input that you want to persist for later use, or you have some backend API requests that you want to cache so that your app is usable when the phone is offline. On Android, we have two libraries that we can use for relational databases. There is first one for SQLite and then there is Room. For the first option, SQLite, it provides a powerful low-level API. However, you don't have any compile time checks for your SQL queries, so you will run into runtime exceptions when you have malformed queries. Also, with it being a low-level API, you will have a lot of boilerplate code and it's pretty error-prone and uh, tedious to use. On the other hand, we have Room, which is a Jetpack library, and it also uses SQLite in the background. However, it provides an abstraction layer on top of it. That means that you will have uh, some annotations that you can use, and in the background, then Room will generate code for you that will interact with the database. So it's much easier to use and way less error-prone. Also, you have compile time query checks. Moreover, we have observable queries, which means that we can observe a table for changes and then react on them. So it supports reactive programming. Also, we won't be blocking the UI thread with Room because it will throw an exception if you try to access it from the main thread. And finally, Room makes testing way easier. Now let's talk about the three main components of Room. The first one are entities, which represent tables of our database. Secondly, we have data access objects, DAOs, which we use to interact with the database. And then we have the database itself. And those three components interact in the following way with each other. We have the room database, um, which we use to get a DAO, and then we will use the DAO to receive an entity from the database. We can then make changes to the entity and then use the DAO again to write those changes back into the database. And that's how Room works. So let's have a look at an example. For the example, we will create the data layer of a simple to-do app. So we will have a to-do entity, then a DAO, which we will use to read and write to-dos from and to the database. But before we look into our to-do entity, the corresponding DAO and the database, uh, let's have a look at our build.gradle file and the dependencies that we need to add to use Room. First up, we define the Room version. Um, as of the recording of the video, the latest version is 2.4.3. And then we add four dependencies for Room and a few more for testing. The first dependency will be the Room runtime. Then we add um, Kotlin extensions for Room so that we can use coroutines and flow. And then we add an annotation processor, which processes the annotations. And finally, we add one dependency for testing room. Then we have five more dependencies for testing. We need those to be able to run our test cases. And you will find all of those dependencies in the pinned comment down below. Now let's have a look at our entity. The entity is a simple data class for to-dos, which contains a to-do text, an optional description, a boolean for whether the to-do is done or not, a field for the date when the to-do was created, and finally an ID for the database. For annotations, we use the entity annotation here to tell Room that this is a table of the database and we can give it a table name here. Um, we can use the column info annotation to give a name to a column. And finally, we have this primary key annotation, which we use to tell Room that this is the primary key of the table and we can set it to auto generate true so that we don't have to generate the ID ourselves. And that's it for the entity. We don't need to do any more to define our database table. Let's move on to the DAO, the data access object for to-dos. And creating this data access object is also quite simple. We just create an interface that we annotate with this DAO annotation. And in that we can then define our operations that we want to use to access the database or write um, to-dos to the database. So first up, we have an insert function that we use to insert to-dos to the database. We have an update function to update and a delete function to delete to-dos. And then we have some queries uh, where we define some custom SQL code. Um, for the first query, we just uh, select by ID. So we select everything from to-do where the ID is equal to ID. Um, so very simple SQL query, but you can also use more sophisticated queries here. Next up, we have um, a get all function where we get all of the to-dos from the database. And uh, here you can see we use flow, so we observe the table. So whenever there is a change, we will get notified via this flow. And then finally, we have a count function to get the count of the to-dos in the database. Now, before we can move on to the database, um, we have one field in our to-do that is the created at field that uses a date and 
out of the box room does not support date. That's why we need some type converters. And that type converters again are some simple functions that we annotate with uh, some annotations. So to convert from a date to um, a long type that room understands, um, we create this from date function that just returns the time of the date as a long. And to convert in the other direction, we have the to date function, which takes in a long and creates a date from it. And with that, we have everything set up to create our database. Um, so for the app database, again, we need an annotation, this time the database annotation. We provide the entities here and the version of the database, um, which we need to increase whenever there are changes to the database models. And then we put in the type converters with uh, this annotation here. The app database is an abstract class that extends the room database. And uh, in here we define functions to get access to our DAOs. Again, we just provide the stubs and we don't need to implement them. So here we have a function for the to do DAO. Um, and that's it. With that, we can then let Room create the database for us and we can access the DAO via this to do DAO function. Also, in the companion object, we use the singleton pattern to create an instance of the app database since the instantiation is pretty expensive. And that's it. That's how to set up Room and to create a Room database. Now, let's have a look at a sample test to see how we would use it. So let's see how we would use our database. Um, inside our test case, we create two late init vars, one for the database and one for the DAO. And then in the before function, um, we set up the database and the DAO. This means that before every test, we will set up a fresh instance of our database. Uh, first up to create the database, we use room and the in-memory database builder. We provide the context and uh, the app database class. And then also we want to allow main thread queries. However, we should only do that, of course, in testing and not in a real app. And then we build the database. Um, to initialize the to-do DAO, we just use the to-do DAO function of our app database. Um, after each test, of course, we want to close the database, which we can use with database.close. Um, and now let's have a look at our sample test. We just uh, create a to-do, we want to insert it. And then afterwards we check if the count of the to-dos is equal to one. And that's it. That's how you set up a room database on Android. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.